Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to um, replace loops using recursion. Recursion is the concept that a function can be expressed in terms of itself. Now that's really wild. If you ever have looked into a mirror and you saw another mirror in the back and you see how it calls itself, recursion sort of does that. That's the way that I um, initially conceptualize it. Uh, to help understand this, start by thinking about the following task. Multiply elements from 0 to n inclusive in an array to create the product of those elements. Using a for loop, you could do this. So here they're saying we, the, you multiply the array, you've got an array, and then you have uh, the number n. We have a product which is equal to the array at point zero. And then while the index is less than or equal to n, so maybe say n's like three, well, if it, and uh, the array, yeah. And then you, you, in, you increment i, and then you product times equals array. So it's basically just your end product is equal to the first element times the product, uh, the element at, at i. And we're starting with i at 1. So we start by multiplying 1. And then we finally return the i. However, notice multiple array is e array n is equal to array n minus 1 times array times n. That means you can rewrite multiply in terms of itself and never need to use a loop. Okay, yeah, so here they're using a loop and they're, what they're doing is incrementing up and as soon as you get to n, you stop, but the product keeps um, building through that. Um, and then, so in this one, they're not using a loop. They're just returning it, but you'll notice that the multiply function is within the return function with the multiply function. And so therefore you're calling it yourself, but then you notice that each time you're subtracting one. The recurse, so I'm going to try to go over that a little bit um, more clearly in a little bit. Uh, the recursive version of multiply breaks down like this. In the base case, where n is less than or equal to 0, it returns the result, the array, at point 0. For larger values of n, it calls itself, but n minus 1. That function call is evaluated the same way, calling multiply again until n is equal to 0. So it keeps going Say it starts with array of, um, you know, 1, 1, 1. Maybe it's a, an array of three points, 1, 1, 1, and then n. So if n, um, and so I guess we have to start with n at 1. So, we, so if n is 3, it's 3 is uh, less than or equal to 0. Hmm, wait a second, I'm going to have to think this over. Recursive functions must have a base case. So here's their base case. Oh, no, the base case is here. That's when they stop operating. Um without calling the function again, in case. In this example, n is uh, less than or equal to zero. So what we want to do is write a recursive function, the sum of an array at n, that returns the sum of the elements from zero to n, inclusive in an array. All right, so this is pretty tricky. So first off, we want to start off with a base case, right? So um, if n is write a recursive function that returns the sum of the elements from 0 to n. Okay, so if n is less than or equal to 0, if n is greater than or equal to 0, we want to return array at n oh okay yeah so when if once n gets down to zero we want to just return all of the things that are in the stack and then else we want to be oh return and then we're going to go the sum of array at n minus one plus array at n and if we run the test i think this should pass Okay, it didn't pass. It only it only passed the first, third, and last one. Your code should rely on some should not rely on any loops. Okay, you should use recursion to solve this problem. We used recursion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put n. See if I get anything like that. Sum of Oh, what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna build the array that we have on the test so I can see it. I want it to actually call the function. And because we're only returning, we need to console.log in order to see it at the bottom. Okay. 
Hmm. Okay, cool. So that was what my error was, was that I had, I was, I actually used a print statement from Ruby up above. Um, so this, this should be the idea. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that lesson. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.